You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something now on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Undefeated. That's right, Undefeated is back, y'all, and cannot wait to jump right back into it. Apparently, this is the longest chapter they've made yet, so let's go ahead and jump right back in. Y'all, Alarm Chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. Uh, we can keep doing this. Let's see. Yeah, one guy got a cartwheel kick knockout. Jesus, why isn't Bucky taught us how to do that? Probably because he knows you'll go for it in a real fight. Redline laughs and lets out a sigh, leaning forward against the railing. We watch the waves in silence for a bit. Hey, Xander? Hmm? Do you think you'll be doing this forever? Fighting, I mean. Hmm. I don't know. I guess I kind of have to, if Bruce is my opponent every time. Until you kick his ass or he retires. Heh, <laughs> right. Any day now. What about you? I don't know either. Don't get me wrong, I like doing what I do here. Fighting is fun, or at least it was? I don't know. It's not really what I expected. This feels familiar. What did you expect? Another sigh. Ooh, excuse me. I don't know. Fighting was a lot more fun when I was doing it for fun, you know? I like staying fit, and I like spending time with my friends and family. I guess I can't do that anymore. Why not? I mean, I'm down here, aren't I? People always said you have to be dedicated and do what you love and all that, and here I am, miles away from my friends and... He shakes his head. Sorry. Well, do you love fighting? I do, but it's like... I'm not doing it because I love it. I'm doing it because I have to now. Is there anything else you'd rather be doing? I don't know. Yes, but I don't know what. Maybe I could have joined that band my buds invited me to, or... Maybe I could have done more, phot more photography or done something with fighting games. Just, it's hard to tell if I fucked up, you know? I sigh. I know. <sighs> I do have one goal, at least. Yeah? Yep. I want to be the best fighter down here. And I want to get so good that they put me in charge. And I'm going to make some changes. Like bigger rooms and more vacation days and hot water in the showers. And healthcare and better pay. And let people use the internet. And more than two washing machines. And I'm going to make them use four eggs and, om and the omelets again. And I'll fix shitty situations like yours. And give Bucky a raise. He just want to be in charge so you can beat him up without getting fired. Shush, you weren't supposed to figure that out. We laugh for a bit. Okay, but I meant what I said, though. One day I'm going to run this place. <sighs> and I'm going to fix everything. Is that how it is, then? Commissioner sighs, eyes glancing to a screen on the wall filled with spreadsheets and reports, the viewing data from tonight's fights. Mm. With numbers like that, you won't be going very far. But not to worry, Red. He snaps his fingers, and a very exhausted-looking rabbit comes to attention. S sir Theodore, do we have the roster set for next matchmaking day? Yes, sir, though I don't think Redline is on it. Bring it here, please. <sighs> I have a few changes I'd like to make. So, I uh, just hit buttons? Yeah, pretty much. Don't these guys do, like, some superpower shit? They gotta get super meter first. Bruce and Redline are stationed up in the game room, or at least that's what Redline calls it. There's actually a few multimedia rooms down here, all the sides of the hallway leading to the immersion chamber. Each one has a big TV hooked up to some streaming services, as well as a bunch of game consoles. Unfortunately, these rooms are off-limits to anyone below Tier 3, but Bruce managed to sneak us in. A new video game just hit the shelves, and some top fighter took a day off to pick a bunch of, pick up a bunch of copies and bring them down for the rest of the guys. That is the sound of men enjoying a video game, I guess. It sounds more like they're throwing real punches instead of playing a game. Someone sp spikes a controller after an, after an especially devastating round. I'm glad there's so many of them. No one's noticing that Bruce is hanging with Redline over here. Ha! <laughs> ha! The screen flashes bright colors as the huge crocodile guy pulls a heavy machine gun out of his trench coat, completely destroying Redline's character. Like, you know, water time. Wait, which? Ew. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, that is actually sh Well, I think I may have messed up y'all. Give me one second. Um, uh, let me load this. Yes. Blue red line. Okay. Hold this hand. Yep. Okay. Okay. What the fuck? Who taught you to do that? You did, dummy. I think. Red drops his controller in shock as a crocodile character does a winning animation. It's kind of cool. Fuck, fuck, go again! Their laughing is only drowned out by the cacophony of rage and excitement from the other tier threes across the room. The twos are battling it out. The twos are the two are battling it out intensely for a short while. It's hard to imagine Bruce has never played this before today. He's but he's apparently doing something right. It looks like he's just mashing buttons, but then again, it looks like he's doing Red's doing that too. Maybe I should have been paying attention to his explanation. They're both pretending to be really intense, but I'm familiar with that determined look on Red's face. I've seen it in training. I saw it in his fight with Jesse two weeks ago. He he gets that whenever he's working hard, but also having a lot of fun at the same time. There's a smile there underneath those gritted teeth. Well, not anymore, now that Bruce somehow managed to win a second, a second round in a row. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this croc's pretty cool. What do you say this what do you say this game was called? Give me the run back! And there they go again, Red tapping away on that big weird box of a controller, Bruce clutching that way too small of a controller Red lent him. God, his hands are massive. That controller fit fine in my hands, but it looks like it was made for kids in his grip. <sighs> the further the match goes on, the more aggressive the two are getting. Red tap Red's tapping gets faster, Bruce's grip gets tighter. You can hear the plastic bend and creak as he moves and turns his wrists until... Both Red and Bruce snap to look at the chunks of plastic in Bruce's hand. Fuck! Oh no! God fucking damn it! He drops the he drops the broken controller, standing up and letting it fall to the floor. Red pauses the game and sets his joystick down. Hey man, it's okay. Bruce is fuming, stomping in circles off to the side, cursing under his breath until Redline steps in his path. Luckily, something happened on the big screen right as Bruce snaps, so the rest of the fighters don't seem to notice. Sorry, I'm such a fucking monster, Red. It's fine, Bruce. It's not. I broke your shit. It's okay, man. I've got another spare. Yeah, but... Most of my games are two-player anyway, so it's not like we're gonna be going without a controller. That's why we have a spare. I guess. I took water back to the seat. Very British grumbling a bit. Where was this kind of remorse when he broke my ribs? I guess he does have a reputation to uphold when the camera's rolling, but... It doesn't make it sting any less. That was months ago at this point, but it still feels a little... I still feel a little pain whenever I take a deep enough breath. I should bring that up to Drayton. So, what else do we have planned? You can use my joystick if you still want to practice. Mmm, I'll pass. I don't want to break more of your stuff. You're fine, man. It happens. I swear, I've seen more broken controllers by guys my size. Although, they're usually... Smash. Another fighter spikes their controller into the ground and starts arguing. Something about screen peeking? Yeah, throwing their controllers into the ground. I promise, Bruce, you're fine. He lets out a sigh. I'm sorry, little buddy. I'll steal you one from Fang. Please don't. I mean, clear. Clearly, they've got reserves. I assume they'll have to pay for those. You'd be surprised if they let top tiers get away with down here, Xander. One time I stayed up past my bedtime and my coach got pissed. That happened to you too? They both crack a smile. Yeah, man, it sucked. He let me off with a warning and a slap on the wrist, but if I was tier one, he would have snapped my neck right there. Not if I snapped his first. What the fuck are you two talking about? Just going over what could happen if I stole a controller. Or if you go out past your bedtime. We don't? Have... bedtimes? And can't you just buy him a new controller? Bruce rolls his eyes. Well, yeah, if you want to be lame about it. Where's your sense of adventure? <sighs> Is that you know? Walter time. Okay. I may be better off stealing one if that's the result. You're not exactly built for stealth, Bruce. Maybe that's exactly what I want you to think. He winks at Redline, as Redline does an overdramatic gasp. I'm glad they're at least getting along. Redline was all quiet a few weeks ago, but since then we've been reading, we've been seeing Bruce more and more often. It's a little awkward, but he's always, he always manages to find a way to make it seem like a coincidence. His buds just happen to sit next to us at mealtimes. He's always somehow working out near, out near our schedule, and now this is a little gaming session. <sighs> I'm glad I don't like to be scared of him anymore. I can at least admit that. 
or even being we're even beginning a little bit closer since Red's fight. Turns out he and I are actually from neighboring cities. Fang made up some fake info for his public bio in an effort to make him more mysterious, but we both think it's because they don't want to advertise a champion as coming from a shady town. I don't trust him fully just yet, but at least now the threat of him ripping my head off in public isn't present as much. Well, he stands up to stretch, ruffling Red's hair as he follows suit. Got any other ideas? I come up and grab, another, grab my other controller. Nah, I'm all video gamed out. Yeah, and I've got to head to an appointment. Ooh, Xander's in trouble. I'm going to see Drayden. It's not like I'm getting called to the principal's office. What'd you do, Zan? Rob a bank? Steal a controller? He's been staying up past his bedtime for months now. I thought you were we were ra we thought we raised you better. For shame. I'm leaving. I laugh as I finally managed to get away, reaching some peace in the quiet hallway. Okay, maybe a bit too quiet. I hope they at least find something to keep them entertained. This is the first time I've had such an appointment to see Drayden in a while, even for anything medical, thankfully. I've bumped into him in the halls a few times, though, and in the cafeteria, too. He's usually accompanied by Bucky, but that might just be a coincidence. Maybe I can grill him about the reasoning for that as payback for how pushy he is regarding my well-being. That'll show him. Drayden's already in his office when I get there. The only thing separating this room from any other room is some kind of... oil diffuser? It's sitting on his table, shooting out an unjust amount of vapor. Hello, Xander. Thank you for meeting with me today. He's speaking in an overly calm tone. Are those... sweatpants? I'm trying something new. What do you think? I fan some of the vapor away from my face. What is this music? Is it romantic music? Are you going to take him out on a date, Xander? Hotboxing your patients is one way to get them to calm down, yeah. The doctor laughs and adjusts the diffuser. I've been trying to make, to make some therapy sessions more enticing. You'd be surprised how many men down here could use it. You know, I really don't think that would be surprise me at all. Another laugh as Drayden crosses his leg and leans back in his chair. I suppose you and I do see, see some of the same sort of people day in and day out. I guess so. You just don't have to deal with them being aggressive in the gym. Oh, there's been a few folks in the med bay that required some added security. You know how grumpy some men can get after a loss. One second, y'all. Water time. That's some good music, though. Mm. That's some banging music, maybe. Or some seducing music. Was that a jab at me? Oh, no, not at all. Sorry, I, um... Uh... I chuckle, shifting in my seat. I'm just teasing. Ah, stop that. It scares me. The two of us giggle. It feels nice to have this alone time with him, but... I, uh, guess we should get started? Of course. What brings you in? I guess I want to talk about my dad. Something happened since our last session. Sort of. Yeah, I got a text from him. At first I was excited because it meant I wouldn't have to talk in person, but he just told me to call him. Ah, that's not very useful. Right? He was always like that, wanting to talk about things face to face. I guess that's not really a bad thing, but sometimes I would just fuck up, you know? It happened with my mom, too. Can you give an example? I... Oh boy. I got a call from your teacher. I got a call from your teacher. Care to explain your grades? I don't know. The class is hard. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You need to get it together. Your cousins graduated the perfect GPA and your father and I did too. Oh! This is Mom. Your father and I did too. I'm sorry. Sorry? Is that really the attitude you want to have? I'm so sick and tired of... Look at me! She would always hit the table when she got mad. You're not even trying anymore. I'm sick of it! Well, do you have anything to say, or are you just going to stand there looking sad? I can't say sorry again. She'll keep slamming the table. And next time, it might not be the table she hits. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Xander? I don't know what to say. Whenever people get mad, I, I freeze up. It happened with Mom and Dad. It happened with the Commissioner. It happened when I first met Bruce. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. And don't forget to stick around, y'all, for the special patron thank you at the end of the video. All right? Bye-bye.